Your Excellency, Ambassador Mulu Soleiman uh, Bezune. It is an honor and a pleasure for us to have you here at the ICD Academy for Cultural Diplomacy. We very much look forward to your upcoming keynote address. And we would like to take the chance now in a little bit more of an int intimate setting to ask you a few questions uh, regarding Ethiopia, cultural diplomacy, and beyond. And uh, we'd be most grateful if you would give us your responses. Uh, the first question that I would like to pose uh, is actually regarding the, the Tigray War. Uh, what peace efforts are made now in order to de-escalate the Tigray War? Does the European Union and Germany, uh, are they supporting uh, these peace efforts? Does the US, and does the war in the Ukraine affect the current situ in Ethiopia, uh, situation in Ethiopia? Uh, what are the prog prognoses for the successful end of the conflict? Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, the Tigray war, it was uh, TPLF who the third time started this war. Mm -hmm. So Ethiopia gave uh, an uh, ceasefire earlier, unconditional ceasefire for humanitarian purpose. Okay. But while the, the, it was prepared for peace talk uh, through African Union uh, supervision, mm -hmm. the Ethiopian government has done every preparation, assigned a committee, and also selected a chairperson and sent also the necessary documents for the mm -hmm. peace. But unfortunately, uh, TPLF was uh, different, giving different reasons not to take it properly. Mm -hmm. And finally, they start the war all of a sudden while we are expecting the, the peace talk. And that's how it happened, because they started the war in Afar and Amhara region, mm -hmm. out of their region. But the government starts protecting the, the society, the people, because it's a must the responsibility of the government to safeguard the people and also keep the territorial integrity of the country and, and also the safe livelihood of the society. Mm. After that, again, uh, with the effort of all partners, uh, internationally, locally, and African Union, all of them, mm -hmm. uh, the peace talk is going to, to take place. They have started the, on talking with the preliminaries, okay. and we believe this thing will have a fruit and will come to, a, to an end in a positive note. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, everybody supports uh, peace talk. Nobody is uh, against the peace, except those who'd like to support terrorists. Mm -hmm. And um, we, we believe all of them are encouraging us to go to talk to peace, be it Germany or uh, European Union or US. Everybody says that we have to come to peace. Mm -hmm. But they have been saying it so, so many times. That's why we, we, the partners, all partners are encouraging us to go to peace. That's why the Ethiopian government, even all the time, the door is open for peace, all the time. Okay. That's how we, we are going to peace, and we believe things will go better. Okay. So you're optimistic? We are always optimistic, Excellent. but to make peace, it takes two, as you of know. Course, of course. Yeah. 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 We will keep you in our prayers for hopefully a coming Thank great you. peace. And my colleagues would like to ask a few questions also about cultural diplomacy. Of course. So, as we know, coffee plays a large part in Ethiopian culture and society. But do you think that coffee itself plays a dominant role in people's perception of Ethiopia? And do you have any stories or antidotes from your experience as an ambassador or working in the political and governmental sphere where coffee changed people's perception of Ethiopia? Yeah, of course. Uh, I can tell the story, but uh, regarding political diplomacy, I mean uh, cultural diplomacy, uh, we know uh, one of the biggest which puts uh, yeah, Ethiopia to the world's eye is uh, sport. You know Ethiopian runners, mostly they are the championship in most of the cases. The women, wh where you see the green flag, is three of them go as, uh, as number one. Most of the cases, the world knows Ethiopia with its sport. And also, uh, additionally, our coffee is always an ambassador, you know. Even uh, one of the girls told me the story when she, was, when she came to Germany. She was suffering to talk to the people. She was not communicating in Germany. But what she did is just one day in, in the apartment she was renting, she had such a garden where mm -hmm. every apartment uh, uh, residents are using. She started making a coffee on their holiday, on the Saturday, Sunday. She likes this one. You'll see it later on. She prepared a coffee and she was serving them freely so that they can taste Ethiopian coffee. It's not because she was so rich, but uh, she had a big heart. And people, without talking to her, start drinking that coffee. Then everybody was helping her to go to study, to, make, to learn the language. She was uh, successful in so many ways. She win the heart of the foreigners without even the language. And the coffee was her language. Therefore, it's a big diplomacy, isn't it? That's yeah, and we can we can tell you like wherever we go, we have this hand woven uh, dress. Even without speaking, 
it has a diplomacy also. Everybody asks who, what is this dress, we tell them it's Ethiopian cultural dress. And also that's one of our, uh, our uh, issue. And the, you, the other issue is our uh, salutation. Like when you go to Ethiopia, everybody says like this, with confidence, but it's not boring, but they respect guests. For us, when guests come, it's a pleasure, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, any person in Ethiopia is uh, always respecting people. And also, any the poorest person will offer you food. Because in the culture, it's considered when a guest comes, it's a blessing. Uh, even the poorest people will offer you with their food. Even if they have nothing, they can stay without food giving to the guest. That's one. Sometimes, like, if you go, they might give you priority. If you go to US or any other part, it says citizens first. But in our country, you know, it's guests first. They give to the guests more priority so that you feel at home. And people are very hospitable. The hospitality is also one of the issues. Everybody went to Ethiopia, a foreigner, anybody is happy. If you work in Addis, even if you think now there is any problem, even if, there is, even if you go to North when there is a war, people are always tending to help you to safeguard you, to walk with you, to go with you, and talk with you. you they, they are not uh, um, aliens, they don't uh, try to avoid people, they are very friendly. This is also great diplomacy for us. And we have our own alphabet and our own uh, language. We have uh, eight, more than 80 languages. It's a diverse society with a lot of religion, with a, a lot of uh, language, but it's a country where Muslim and Christians eat from the same table. And it has that great uh, culture of uh, peacekeeping. As Ethiopia has never been colonized, uh, never in history. We know even Europeans and others have this story of coloni col being colonized. But Ethiopia has never been colonized. And with this type of uh, pride and uh, uh, culture, the people are always welcoming to anybody. They don't have this grudge. They are full of forgiveness. Whether a white person come, black come, or what, they consider human beings as human beings. They like people. They talk to everybody. That's why even the, the Muslims now, always they talk wherever you go. They say it's the first democratic country who welcome uh, immigrants of uh, Muslim to stay peacefully, safely. That's one of the big uh, diplomacy that people can learn out of it. Even Ethiopia, even today, when we are suffering with, from so many problems, um, locust, the drought, flood, COVID, and a lot of things, we are still hosting more than one million people from around the world as immigrants. And it's not because we are rich, but we have big heart. And that's a reality. And it's a big diplomacy for me to host uh, people. It's not because you are rich. It's not because you have extended, uh, extended resource, but it's only because you have big heart. This is also a big diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. In our culture, to welcome foreigners, to welcome guests is a big, uh, a big uh, a blessing in, in everybody's heart. Okay, okay. okay so uh, regarding the cultural diplomacy in Ethiopia, uh, how important do you think it is? Uh, you just gave us some great examples, but how do, uh, do you think, like, how important is it? Actually, for us, uh, cultural diplomacy is um, our, our uh, already, which goes without saying, because we don't uh, need, you see, you might need, give it a name diplomacy, but it was there already. Because even if the old ladies, old people, young people come in, it's, it's a diplomacy means how to talk, how to communicate, how to create relation to people. They have been even friends with those who, who were trying to colonize Ethiopia. They are still trying to win the heart of those who were, who were bad on our people, who killed our people, but they are not taking grudge. And even everybody say, okay, that we have forgiven. Again, afresh they start uh, coming, welcome, being welcoming to everybody. And when you travel, they show you the culture, how they, they dance, mm -hmm. the music. It's very unique. You must have seen the, you said you are in Addis last yes, time. Yes, yes. And have you seen the Skista, which is uh, like very shaking and I everybody? I think so. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't yeah. recognize it. Yeah, you, you must have tried dancing. that. You must have tried that. When you go to Addis yeah. without seeing that, yeah. next time you go, please try. No. We, we also <laughs> have the, the food, I remember, as well, where yeah. we would sit around the Even table the, and the, we yeah. share the, the big plates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the dance is also one of the diplomacy where people will invite you. Everybody will be invited. Old person, young people, everybody will join. It, it's not only because one, one uh, nation, every nationality, 
nations and nationalities in the country have different culture, different food, different uh, song and dance, but we all practice the same. And we are, when it comes a holiday, that everybody's song is uh, played, everybody's dance is uh, played, and this is also like uh, naturally, it goes to the, not uh, to the elite or only to the high class or to the student, but everybody from the grassroots up to the highest level participate in this, in the song, in the participation. Even as you see the food, we have a circle round uh, plate, not a square or a rectangle. That has a meaning. It's when you come to food, food is important for everybody as a human being. And it puts everybody, the king and others, on the same round table so that we eat from the same as a human being, that we are equal, we respect each other. This is a big diplomacy. Yeah. Thank you. I think in that sense, food, yeah. dance, the music, these are all yeah. forms of expression and language yeah. that can bring people together, regardless yeah. of citizenship, nationalities. So. Yeah, like dress is like a smile. Mm. Like now when I smile, when I go, I may not know your language, but smile is a language itself. I'm happy to see you when I smile. Likewise, in Ethiopia, we have our own national dress, uh, traditional dress, that also speaks without saying, without a word. That's also diplomacy, where our language, our uh, culture, our arts also. We have a beautiful, uh, very antique arts you see in the, in the Rokyun church. That's uh, an ancient uh, discoveries. And also Lucy, which is uh, the cradle of humankind, which is found in Ethiopia, itself is uh, another diplomacy. We are the land of origin because coffee is originated in Ethiopia and it's the, the home of Ethiopia, the, the, the Arabica coffee especially. And a lot of things where we are, we can say that Red Fox and Walia Ibex, it's only in Ethiopia, found only in Ethiopia. All these things which makes Ethiopia also a 13 months of sunshine. You people have uh, 12 months, we have 13 months. And we have 13 months and also 13 months of sunshine. That's also another one. And uh, you can see the diversity where it, show, it shows you a, a variety of culture as a diplomacy to attract uh, tourists also. Uh, but uh, I advise you to go and see any time next time. Uh -huh. yeah. Your mention of tourists leads me to the next question where I wanted to talk about Ethiopia in terms of tourism and also foreign investments. Mm. Uh, a big question, uh, we'd be very curious for your answer. Uh, what can Ethiopia offer to the world? As you think of those you know, possible exports, culturally, coffee, etc. That would be my first general question. And I'd be grateful if you could name for us the top five initiatives that were successfully globally exported. What are the advantages that Ethiopia can offer with regards to those uh, for investors uh, who are interested to invest in real estate, for example? Uh, and then finally, what can Ethiopia offer to young people who would like to visit, work, and live? Okay. Actually, we, our main export so far is gold, coffee, and live animals, and also uh, oil seed, and also flowers. But with the new uh, homegrown economic policy, there is a big diverse that we are going to enter into leather, textile, and also a lot of issues where we have uh, comparative advantage. Uh, this last time, it was not now, since they have come to homegrown economic policy, they have critically seen where is our capacity, where do you have more, where is our uh, comparative advantage to, to manufacture and go. And also uh, we, we want to go into ITC and also tourism also one of the issues because it's not touched at all. We have a lot of even nine heritage sites, we have a lot of things to show to the world. Even uh, Ethiopian culture, generally African culture is very unique. We have a lot of values to share to the world. We sometimes think only the Western or uh, external is good, but when you sit down and see, we have a lot of values. For example, if you see one example, uh, the, the family example is great. Now in this country, I see nice people with big money, they only alone by, with dog, one person in big house. But in our place, the families help each other help the children. Nobody will be left alone, nobody. Because togetherness, to share, this is a big value. So that uh, even others should go towards this, so that human beings shouldn't be alone. Because we need each other. Even if that person is old, he needs somebody to talk to him, to help him. Not only the, not, okay, you can give him to the centers, Himes, but that may not give uh, that warm, warm uh, feeling you get from your brother, your, uh, your neighbors, others. 
So that such things are really great values to consider for me. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing those, those reflections. Yes, that's an example. Some, <laughs> some insights. I think we're all looking forward to hopefully yeah. going, in my case, back to Ethiopia. Yeah, and in your case, but you make it as a dancing well. that time. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you again very much, thank Excellency. You so much. Thank you so much. We, we look forward to your lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for asking me.